virtual computers. They're a really cool concept. You can spin up a computer in the cloud, give it whatever specs you want, whatever unlimited storage you want, and operate in that virtual PC from whatever physical computer you have. And it could be a crappy physical computer, but you could have a supercomputer that you're using in the cloud. Cool concept. AWS has them, Google Cloud has them, pretty much every cloud service offers them. But unless you're an IT person or a bit more technically capable than myself, they're complicated to set up. However, I found a solution that is a super easy to use cloud computer service called Wagon or Wagon or Wagon, something like that. It's basically a click on demand, super easy to use interface where you can spin up a computer and switch the specs as needed and run this virtual PC. It does all the work for you. You don't have to have any technical knowledge. And so we use this on a couple of projects. I'm gonna dig into how Wagon works and how we used it in our workflow. Let's jump into it. All right, so as you can tell, I am a Mac user. Uh, I pretty much have Macs all over the place here. But on a recent project that we did, the Culver Cup AWS AI competition, where we created a short AI film, I was trying to dig into Unreal Engine and some other software a bit more that only worked on PC. And as you can tell, I am a Mac person. And as some people commented on the video, they made fun of me for being a Mac person and not a PC person, uh, but that's okay. However, I did need a PC and I didn't want to go out and just buy a whole new PC just for the specific task. And I was trying to figure out virtual computers and how to spin one up. I couldn't figure it out with AWS, but that was where I found Wagon. So as I said at the intro, Wagon is basically a one-click setup where you can spin up a virtual PC, pick whatever specs you want, and you can change those specs at will, but you can also store your files up there. You can kind of keep this perpetual virtual PC running and you could access it from laptop, iPad, tablet, smartphone, whatever device you can access this virtual PC and give it whatever specs from very basic specs to very high-end super specs, whatever you need at the time, and you just pay for what you use. So let me dig into how the pricing set up in the first place, and then we'll dig into how uh, we use it and how I have it set up. So the pricing set up uh, in sort of two components. You sort of have your base monthly fee to keep your computer spun up and keep the storage and perpetual stuff going. And that comes out to $8 a month right now as I'm recording this, which is extremely affordable and pretty low cost, shockingly low cost. That's sort of the base fee to kind of keep the virtual machine running, your apps and everything loaded, saved, stored. And then you have your pay per use fee. And so basically this is where you can pick your specs and you just pay for however long you have the machine spun up. So as we can see here, you could have a uh, graphics accelerated configuration with four cores, 25 gigabytes of uh, GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM for 167 an hour, all the way up to 48 cores, 192 gigabytes of RAM, super crazy supercomputer, uh, and then other configurations depending on what task you want to do. And as you get more specs, the price per hour goes up. Now, the cool thing is that they only bill per minute. So this is the hourly price, but it gets prorated based on whatever your usage time is. So if you only use this PC for 30 minutes or so, you get charged for half that. You don't have, there's no like upcharge for paying for a minimum of an hour. So that's basically the gist of the pricing. To use the actual computer, uh, there is a separate app that they have. So there's a separate Wagon app. You've got your computer set up. When you're setting it up for the first time, it'll ask you a couple of options. Uh, the first one, what is your configuration? So I'm gonna use the uh, Spark configuration for this demo, but you could go with a very super cheap 25 cent an hour, two core, four gigabytes RAM, that would be very slow. But you can kind of pick whatever setup you want and you can mix this and switch this at any time. So if you're kind of doing some basic just configuration work, you could pick a lower cost configuration. And then if you're doing a lot of processing, a lot of rendering, trying to render out a project, you can up, up, up your specs and uh, use that just for that specific task and then get out, switch to something else. So the configurability of being able to pick and choose what specs you want based on the task at hand is a really awesome feature. And again, you can use this from whatever PC you have or whatever computer you have. As long as your internet connection is good, you'll get that really good performance. And then you load up, you can see I've got $10 of credit here. You top up your credits and then it just deducts from whatever your balance is. And you can have that set to auto renew, uh, stuff like that. So I'm gonna have my configuration here. And then you also pick what server you wanna use. So obviously you wanna pick whatever you are geographically closest to. Uh, the last time I used this, I was in Florida, but now I'm back in LA. So I'm gonna switch this to California. Oh, well, on second thought, I might not switch regions. I did not realize there was a region migration fee of $11. All right, I'm not gonna do that. But as you can see, you can switch the migration and you would pick this the first time when you set it up and most likely you're not bouncing around that much. So I'm gonna leave it in North Virginia. The connection is still super strong. It says I'm smooth, not excellent, but good enough for this demo. And then you can see here I have storage. And so there's two 
separate storage components that you pay for in Vagon. This one is 175 gigabytes. So this is actually the computer storage. So your computer comes with, I believe it is this one, the disk storage, 75 gigabytes is what the computer comes with. So this would be like your C disk, the storage space on the computer. You install your files, you load all of your necessary stuff. I was loading a couple of versions of Unreal Engine, but they're all pretty big. Uh, so I filled up the 75 gigabytes uh, pretty quickly. And so I had to pay an upgrade to 175 gigabytes of the C space. And it's about, I think, $5 per 50 gigabytes per month. And once you upgrade, you can't downgrade that storage space. So as you can see, I can't go backwards, but I can keep adding more storage and then it just automatically adjusts your monthly payment. So it's really flexible in that regard. So I upped it to that to get the better storage. But then the separate storage is this uh, file storage here. And so this loads up as another virtual drive. And this is where you would store your working files, project files, your media. This comes with 50 gigabytes. You can then switch that 250 gigabytes, 500 gigabytes. And, and then you can see here the monthly rate. So 250 gigabytes is $13 a month. Terabyte is $42 a month. And that's on top of your other computer usage and your $8 monthly usage fee and whatever extra storage you might have on your computer storage. But also with these files, you can see that you can access them here in the cloud without having to spin up the computer itself. You can download them straight from here or upload files straight from here. So this is cool because you don't have to spin up the computer and waste computer usage time. You can upload files in the background so that they're there when you load up your computer. And then lastly, there's a nice safety feature you can pick how long you want it to run in the background, idle. So this is good if you forget to turn the computer off or exit out of it, that it doesn't keep incurring billing charges. So I have it set to the lowest time, 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, if I forget about it or don't do anything, it'll automatically log out and uh, prevent crazy usage fees. All right, so that's sort of the gist of how this is set up. When you are spinning this up for the first time though, it will ask you if you want to pre-install any software. And this is a cool feature. At first I was like, eh, whatever, I could do it myself. But this is actually cool because it will set up the computer, the virtual computer, and then install the software. But now you're not paying for usage time to install that software. So I hit this issue because the one annoying thing about this is if you are dealing with Unreal Engine, it will only install the Epic installer. It won't install any of the Unreal Engine apps. So it will only install the Epic installer. So then you have to spin up the computer and then install the uh, Unreal Engine programs, which can take a while because it's got to download the 30 or 40 gigabyte files and install it. So that's just money you're paying for computer usage when it would be cool if it uh, did upload or uh, install the app before you spun up your computer. Um, the other thing too was some of the apps were a bit dated. So I also had to pre-install DaVinci Resolve, but this was when DaVinci Resolve 19 had just come out of beta. So that was the current version, but it, loaded version 18.5, which is like a year old. So yeah, those are some of the uh, picky issues, but just kind of useful in a sense where you can preload apps and then not have to pay for uh, computer usage while you're installing apps. All right, so that's the gist. You would have your thing set up, your computer set up, and then you spin it up and hit run computer. And as you can see, it can take a few minutes for the computer to actually spin up, boot up, and to get logged on. So we will fast forward through this time. I will say uh, one annoying thing about this, because I have checked, um, it is charging me for the spin up time. So if I look at the computer, the log of the usage, it will have the extra few minutes for the spin up time. So that's one annoying thing that you're paying for time that you cannot actually use a computer because it is still booting up. So one thing to keep in mind. So yeah, that's one slightly annoying thing too. It connect or it spins up and then you have to connect to it again. Uh, it doesn't just automatically connect. Um, sometimes I have had the occasional issue where it runs through that boot up process and then um, know, times out or nothing happens and I gotta like run through the thing again and it billed me for those couple minutes that it tried to boot up but did not. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, so. We're booted up. I'm running APC on my Macintosh computer. 
That is ultimately the magic of what we're doing here. As you can see on the side, there's a little control panel here too, where you can uh, turn on specific uh, settings. So like if you want to run command as control, because I have a Mac keyboard, you can control copy text in and out of Vagon. And then you can also control some other settings like where's the sound going to go to, stuff like that. Uh, display, you could also pick some of your display quality stuff, which uh, also is useful if you have a crappy connection or you're having some issues. Uh, you could change your display settings here. I don't think it supports dual display. I've not tested that, but as far as I know, I don't think it does. Online file storage and then VR stuff, which I have not experimented with, don't quite know what it does. So anyways, we're on our desktop computer. If we go to our file browser, I will show you what I was talking about, the two different types of storage. So if we go to the computer, the local C disk, this was the one I was talking about where the pricing is a little bit higher. You can only up it, it's $5 per 50 gigabytes. So this is 175 gigabyte storage that I upgraded that I paid for where any files that need to be stored on the C disk are. And then the virtual disk, which is a little, oh, here we go. It, some, for some reason, it doesn't fully show up here the first time you boot it up. But if you launch the, uh, the Vagon files, it's the V drive. And then this is the virtual disk, the virtual files that you can navigate to from the web browser. You can pull these files in, upload them, download them without having to boot up the computer. So virtual files, that storage, which is like $40 a terabyte a month and then the actual C disk computer storage. So those are the two separate storage things that you have the options of how you want to manage your files. But for like applications and stuff, this was why I had to upgrade because I was installing multiple versions of Unreal Engine to try to get that to work. Uh, I was installing models for Comfy UI, trying to get Comfy UI to work. I'm not gonna go through the whole sign-in thing, but that was why the C drive had to upgrade. So that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, I haven't booted this up in a few months, but as you can see, everything is pretty much exactly where I left it off. And that's sort of the magic of virtual PCs. You can use it from this computer, whatever device you have. It is a virtual machine and you could change the specs and up the specs as needed or downgrade the specs as needed for the computer. Uh, the two things I used it for, and this is where some issues did come into play. One was I was trying to run Unreal Engine, specifically MetaHuman. So there is Unreal Engine for Mac, but the issue that I hit was a, a lot of features uh, with MetaHuman are only in Unreal Engine on the PC. However, even after um, installing and going on the PC with that, I still hit issues where it just wasn't quite working. And I don't know if it was because it was a virtual machine. And I even asked Vagan and they're like, sometimes like just stuff, it's a virtual machine. It's not a physical PC, just sometimes stuff does behave weird or doesn't work as expected. So Unreal Engine did not actually work out entirely. But what did work out really well uh, was Comfy UI. So <laughs> I just released a video about how Comfy UI installed their desktop installer, which makes it a lot easier to set up and run on a Macintosh. I couldn't figure it out at the time, but I was able to successfully load it on this virtual PC and spin it up. And then I didn't get too far down the rabbit hole with Comfy UI yet, but there were a lot of possibilities there where if you were doing a lot of generations, you could up your GPUs, get NVIDIA GPUs, do a lot of generations, and then spin it down if you're kind of just messing around with it a bit less or not using it. Um, so it is kind of cool in that use case where you could have that flexibility of using it for AI generation, cranking up your uh, processing, uh, your GPUs, and then turning it down. So that's pretty much the gist of it. You, I mean, it really is what you get. It's very easy to use, load up and spin up a virtual PC. You've got a PC on whatever device you're using with whatever specs you want to give it. There are a couple limitations. And if you use virtual PCs, um, you'll probably these will probably flag up right away. It's pretty much isolated. So I know a lot of benefits with virtual PCs, I believe, is that the advantages you can connect it to your cloud storage, uh, or you can make it more collaborative, or you can have multiple people using a virtual PC session. You can't, as far as I can tell, you can't do that here. It's just you spinning up your virtual PC with your Vagon files. It can, you can install other file transfer methods. Like I, I can install frame IO transfer here, use that as a sync folder. I can run uh, DaVinci Resolve Cloud on here, sync files to this cloud storage if I wanted to. So you have that possibility, but it's not like you can connect your S3 bucket here that every that other people are using and sync it with your files here. Maybe there's an enterprise level where you can do that, but with this $8 a month plan, you can't do that. And you can't collaborate. You can't bring other users into your virtual space. So if you're looking for that, that was probably a route where you would need to get uh, or figure out someone who's a bit more IT specific and you could do that with AWS or Google Cloud Service or any of the other cloud services that offer virtual machines. But if you're looking for a very easy to use 
cloud uh, computer that you do not have to be a technical expert to use and spin it up. Vagon is an excellent option. Uh, an excellent just to kind of keep in your back pocket where it's like, I need a PC to do some tasks. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of getting a full PC. This is an excellent way to have a PC at your fingertips uh, to do whatever you need to do. And then you can just hop out and go back into your Mac land. So let me know what you think of this. If you see any other use cases for having a virtual PC, we'd love to know your thoughts. Um, also, I have a link below. I think there's like a, you can get a $5 credit to test this out with one of the links. So we'll share it down in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.